The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat and Petuan nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Praise the one true love incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose for many, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory. Praise the one who makes us one. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Peace, Peace everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, everyone. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Job. There once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and uptight, upright one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as any foolish woman would speak. 
Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving. and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell. And the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners. nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots, and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly I will bless the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed here of all things. Through whom he has also created the worlds. He is a reflection of God's glory in the exact imprint of God's very being. And he has sustained all things with his powerful word. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels. As the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor. 
subjecting all things with their feet. Now in the subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control as it is. We do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor. Because of his suffering of death, so that the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting, it was fitting that God, for the womb through womb all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sacrificed, sacrificed and those who are sant sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some Pharisees came with the crowd, and to test Jesus they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery with her against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. 
And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A uh, few people, I think, look forward to the days when the teachings on divorce come up in the lectionary. Often it's possible to avoid them through a clever transfer of other feasts, but uh, that didn't work out this year. Mark's version, especially, where Jesus' prohibition is the most absolute, is not an easy reading to manage in a context where marriage is a profoundly different institution than it was in Jesus' time, when our expectations and understandings and experiences are all very different. Some here have been through divorce. Some of us are children of divorce. We know that the end of a marriage is not, in fact, always the worst thing that can happen. It is never pleasant or easy, but sometimes it is necessary. Sometimes it is the most loving thing two people have left to do. And sometimes, for some women in particular, it can be life-saving. Worse yet, with this particular passage, it has been quite unreasonably yanked out of context and used as a proof text against same-sex, same-gender marriage, as if that were the point Jesus was trying to make, rather than it being a reflection of the historic reality that in his time, legal marriage, and therefore legal divorce, could only happen between a man and a woman. Whatever the problems people who were not inclined to marry the opposite gender faced, the ethics of legal divorce were not among them. In fact, and this is something I've written thousands of words about, so footnotes in my blog, when read in historic context, this is meant to establish women as fully equal participants in relationships in a time when they were at a tremendous legal and social disadvantage as equal participants in the image of God. It, it presents some of the same problems as a number of our hymns, including the offertory hymn we'll hear shortly, where you know, they were written at a time when it was important and even radical to talk about men and women doing God's work. And now they can sound like they are excluding those people for whom the experience of their life is somewhere outside or beyond the gender binary. Human language, it's a bitch. One could simply say that the absolute ban on divorce here is, is the standard to which we should aspire, the heroic mortality, morality that we find all through Matthew's gospel, and that we will inevitably fail because we are flawed and broken beings, that all we can do is fail and be forgiven. This has integrity, it has some truth. This is the same Jesus who said that if you ever look at anybody with us, you're committing adultery. But even when you scrape away the heterosexist sexist assumptions, it's a minor point to be fixating on, even if we grant that it was the Pharisees and not Jesus who brought marriage up in the first place. The preservation of legally constituted marriage as the gold standard in human relationships leaves a lot of people out of the picture altogether and is not really in keeping with Jesus' otherwise highly ambiguous attitude to marriage and families. So I'm going to go in a, a somewhat lateral direction. I'd like to say that there is in this reading a kind of truth about human life 
that is larger than the issue of divorce and doesn't apply only to marriages, heterosexual or otherwise. And that truth is our inextricable entanglement with one another, the impossibility of untying the knots we tie between ourselves, the impossibility of making the ways that we mark each other go away. An intimate partnership is a particularly vivid example of this, though not the only one. A relationship may break down. Human love will reach a limit or be betrayed. But you can't make it as if it never was. You can't pretend that it isn't permanent in its mark and meaning, either the relationship or the loss of it. Love is never trivial. Even inadequate human attempts at love, ridden with illusion and self-deception, are never trivial. And in some sense, they are never temporary. Everyone I have loved and everyone I have hated is a part of me, part of my flesh incorporated into my soul and body and I into theirs. We come to God not alone, never alone, but in the company of those who have touched us whom we have touched. We are made by them and they by us, and there is no salvation apart from us. We are like that, simply, permeable and vulnerable creatures, like children, in fact, dependent, powerless, held in the arms of others and in the arms of God. Only in this way can we enter the kingdom. To me, that's the core of the teaching on divorce, the need to honor that, to admit that we are like children, unable to survive alone, not in this life only, but in our deepest being with God. We are radically vulnerable to hurt and damage, scarred and changed by our intimacies, and we cannot make anything as if it hadn't been. Mistaken or otherwise, we are bound. We are changed by love and we are changed by loss, and the losses are real and deep and utterly non-trivial. Now I'm going to turn to Job and the God of that folktale beginning of this complex and amazing book, sitting up on his cloud, making nasty wagers with Satan, who seems to be a bit of, bit of his buddy. This God is a projection, of course, one of our many strange images, but a projection of something real of our own sense of the depth of our vulnerability, flies to wanton boys, subject to forces that will rip us away from everything. Job, in the first chapter of the book, loses his social standing, his possessions, his bodily integrity, his children. Although apparently not, for better or worse, his wife, good old Ms. Curse God and I, of course he feels like a token in a cruel divine game. And of course we all feel that way at times, sitting here on our garbage dumps, scraping at our afflictions with potsherds, trying to live decently in a time like few of us have ever known, suspecting that this is only the beginning of harder times ahead. It is a consequence of our ability to mark each other that we can suffer this grief. Love fails, plans and marriages fail, we lose our dreams, lives do fall apart. Children are born sick or damaged and children do die. And in real life, we don't cheerfully replace them with new and better children at the end of the story. In a time of plague or other times, all our beloved ones will die. And we cannot avoid this. We cower before the Leviathan of loss, and God gives us no explanations, no answers, only a whirlwind to speak to us. 
But there is another thing that God gives us. It is a promise that our vulnerable suffering is not ours only. This is something we see the writer of Hebrews struggling to put into awkward and complicated words. That Christ, the very imprint of the creator God, the principle of all creation is implicated by his own free choice tied up in human suffering. That the mortal, trembling, grieving form of earth is beloved, it's become the shape of the beloved. All of creation is in some way ours, because Christ is the truth that underlies all creation. And all our relationships, all our efforts at connection and faithfulness are tied up in creation. This, more than any spurious gender binary, is the ultimate message of Jesus quoting Genesis today in the Gospel. We are, in all our gender and other diversities, created to be with each other in spite of all the dangers. And Christ gives himself up to us freely, unstintingly, entering fully into the greatest depth of fragility and brokenness and loss. And in this is a beauty beyond what we can even imagine. Held out to us the lovely frame of this creation, the shimmer of that beauty in our eyes. It is not consolation, but it is a narrative which entangles us in glory, even when we are lost and our human loaves fall away from us. So our task is to be faithful to our own souls, to each other, and to the God who animates us, even when we are not very good at it, even if we are Job's well-meaning and unhelpful friends or his cranky wife, all of whom do manage to get right to the end of the story with him one way or another. Not every promise can be kept, not every commitment maintained, but we can honor even so each attempt and each choice. We can understand each small promise between human creatures and between all creatures in this world as a shadow, even partial and temporary, of a faithfulness which does not fail or end. And we can hand ourselves over to that faithfulness, even on the ash heaps, like children in the arms of one in whom they can finally, truly place their trust. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God, who created each of us in their image, show yourself to each of us through our neighbors, caring for one another. To the petition, show us the abundance of your creation. I invite you to respond and break down the walls that hold us back. And break down the walls that hold us back. We pray today in the Worldwide Anglican Cycle of Prayer for the Church in Wales. And in the Anglican Church of Canada, your prayers are asked for the Right Reverend Anna Greenwood Lee, Bishop and Clergy and People of the Diocese of British Columbia. And in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Lower Mainland Region of the British Columbia Synod. Show us the abundance of your creation. And break down the walls that hold us back. In our diocesan cycles, we pray this evening for area pre-synod meetings. For St. Philip Etobicoke, its monthly community lunch, Christmas hamper program, and support of the Dorothy Lay Hospice and the Western Area Emergency Services Food Bank and for St. Savior Orono, and its support of the Durham Migrant Worker Ministry, and for St. Savior Toronto, its Bread of Life Grocery Gift Card Program, Refugee Sponsorship in partnership with the West End, Ref the East End Refugee Committee, and its participation in Center 55's Share a Christmas Program. Show us the abundance of your creation and break down the walls that hold us back. We pray today in our parish family for Elizabeth Cummings and Tucker Knight, Compton Downs, Joy Duran, Olivia Diswick, Anna Eisner, Sue Ann Elite, Maria Erskine and Hugh Thomas, Monica Fekiesi, Andre Forge, Keith Freeman, Hugh Goldring and Nicole Burton, and Felix, Tucker Gordon, Peter Hairsnape, and Ken Peters, Margaret Harry. Show us the abundance of your creation. And break down the walls that hold us back. Remember in your prayers those who are sick or in special need, especially Phyllis, Vanessa, Becky, Alex, Tasia, Damien, Tanis, Beck, Lavinia, Michael, Victor, Kadeem, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Andrew, Leone, Dave, Margaret and Gary, Sue Ann, Terry, Dunette, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Mother Joyce and Deacon Allison, Andy Ali, Chris, Chris, Christine, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, Venetia, Edith, George, Greta, Tom, Laura, Shirley, Christine, John, Darla, John, and the Huggins family. Show us the abundance of your creation and break down the walls that hold us back. Remember the lost, the homeless, all those who suffer through war and injustice, and all the communities mourning the loss of so many of their children to institutionalized anti-Indigenous racism. Remember in your prayers those who have died and those who have lost their lives through acts of violence. Rest eternal eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.
Remind us of your heavenly justice, where all are housed and no one hungers. Amen. Sing hallelujah to our God. Sing out in glad and glorious praise. Let holy, holy be your song. Live all your heart through all your days. For holy is the name we know. In highest heaven and earth below. Creator, Father, Mother blessed, in whom all parents end their quest. <clears throat> Sing hallelujah to the Son, by word and deed his love proclaim, <clears throat> in whom all sons their sonship find, and every daughter knows her name. All oh, praise with loud and joyful songs. The child to whom each child belongs. The lamb who to the father brings. All living, dying, helpless things. Sing hallelujah, raise the hymn to Holy Spirit, God of grace, who finding all the church in one, awakens hearts in every place, that every family may find in unity of you. Mankind, the only truth that sets us free, the love that serves eternally. Let us pray. God of truth, receive all we offer you this day. Make us worthy servants, strong to follow the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. In your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In our unending joy, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So you, may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been strengthened by this Eucharist remain in your steadfast love and show in our lives the saving mystery that we celebrate. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Praise to the holiest in the height and in the depth we praise and in all his words most wonderful most sure in all his ways all loving wisdom of our god when all was sin and shame he has again added to the fight and to the rescue came. Oh, generous love that flesh and blood, which did in Adam fail. Should strive afresh against the foe, should strive and should prevail, and that the highest gift of grace should flesh and blood refine. Go. 
God's presence and his very self and essence all divine. Oh, in the garden secretly and on the cross on high should teach his followers and inspire to suffer and die. Praise to the holiest in the height and in the depths be praised in all his words most wonderful most sure in all his ways go forth in peace to love and serve the lord thanks be to god and thank you, everyone. Um, I suppose the first announcement is that uh, if you want to experience this service a second time, but in person, we uh, have our in-person Sunday worship at 1030 tomorrow morning in the church. Um, everyone is very welcome. We do still have room for more people. We haven't used the balcony yet. We're we're about full on the ground, but we can use the balcony and that means we can fit more people in. So if you would like to uh, try coming back to church in person, Sunday at 1030 in the morning. Yes. And uh, tomorrow at five, we will have our in-person blessing of animals. Um, not tomorrow, Monday. I'm losing track of days. Monday at five. Uh, outside the church, the blessing of animals for the Feast of St. Francis. It's a very short service. Um, because animals don't have much patience for that kind of thing. But it's it's always fun, so I hope you're able to come. Uh, you don't have to bring a pet, but obviously if you can bring a pet to be blessed, that's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and then at seven, we will have our Cloud of Unknowing discussion group, um, which uh, you don't need to know anything about the Cloud of Unknowing to join us. We're still very near the beginning of the text, so you can talk to me or Catherine information about that. And Tuesday at 7.30 on Zoom, the parish Bible study, 20 minutes of silent meditation and discussion of the gospel for the coming Sunday. And you can talk to me or Leroy for Zoom information about that. Oops. Yes. Um, I probably should keep the announcements short because uh, Simone is getting bored with them. Um, you can always give us money at our website. There's another announcement. And uh, the Deacons of York Credit Valley have the next installment of their Reconciliation Walk series coming up on October 14th. I don't know if Elizabeth wants to talk more about that now. Um, if not, you can contact Elizabeth another time to ask for information. Elizabeth, do you want to talk about it now or no? Uh I don't have the information right in front of me but okay. at this moment. Okay, but. get in touch with Elizabeth for more information about the Deacons of York Credit Valley Reconciliation Walk event, uh, which Catherine there is Catherine. cleverly putting yes. on the screen. The next event is coming up rather shortly, so on yes. October 14th, so. Yes, <laughs> so by all means, look it up and attend online if you can. And October 30th is the Diocesan Social Justice and Outreach Conference, also online. And the keynote speaker is the Reverend Gerlin Henry, who used to be a student here. So uh, look that one up as well and attend online if you can. Uh, I think with that, that will be all the announcements. We will move on to the postlude. And I uh, encourage everyone to stick around after the postlude for uh, at least a, a few moments of chatting and perhaps not drinking coffee this time of night, but at least a, a little time to catch up. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.